Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this midweek edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. And today we'll be looking at a very interesting topic, how to use chat GPT to support being HR. Okay, we'll be looking at how we can leverage on artificial intelligence, AI, chat GPT to be specific, to support our HR functions across the HR value chain. Today, we have a very interesting professional who will be facilitating, just in case there are people who don't know her yet, our facilitator for today is Abimbola Victoria Akin Dilete. Okay, she's one of the core team members at HR Mentorship. She's a Can you all see my screen now? She's a certified project management professional. She's also an associate of Hello. the HR Institute of Personnel Management. She has the HRPL certification. All right. Currently, Victoria is the Hello, Mr. Yami, can you see my screen? Administrator, group HR administrator with a bronze survey, and she will be teaching us briefly tonight. Please, let's welcome Victoria as she takes over control. Yes, Victoria, I can see your screen. Can, if you can hear me, please, you have control of the session now. Hello, Victoria. Okay. Victoria, are you still with us? Move on, you know, on our productivity this using is being recorded. chat GPT. Uh, first and foremost, thank you very much, everybody, for joining and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. And I'm um, so sorry, my uh, the presentation is coming on now, and um, I don't know, it's been taking a whole lot of time to come up. So, but let's just start. My name is Abimbola Victoria Kindelete. I am the group HRA at uh, Bone Energy Group, and um, I'll be talking on using chat GPT as a tool to support HR. And while I'm talking, about this, I'll be analyzing the opportunities and I'll also be analyzing the limitations. So, as I said, the topic is using chat GPT as a tool to support HR and I'll be analyzing, being recorded. I'll be analyzing the opportunities and um, the limitations, but I'll be dwelling more on the opportunities than the limitations. So let's start. Please, um, page, two, uh, page two, please. Hello, Mr. Yemi, page two, please. Hello, Mr. Yemi, are you here? Yes, I can see your slide, but I need page two. Where else can I see the slides, please? I'll try it on page three now. Where else can I see the slides? I'm only seeing page one. I'm not sure this will work. Where else can I see my slide? Just page one, sir. Yeah, I page one, too. Yeah, I one. That's in one. Page one. We'll try one more time. It doesn't we'll work. We have got, OK? We have 
Okay. Yes, you are in page one now. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, welcome. And um, today, just as I said, we'll be dwelling on, we'll be talking about chat GPT and how it can help our work. And so I call chat GPT a uh, HR sidekick because I, that's what I've been using it for. And um, just once again, I'm honored to talk about this topic. And um, I'll be letting you into opportunities. I said I'll be dwelling more on opportunities than the limitations. I know some people probably since I've been talking about chat GPT in the group, some people will be like, ah, uh, uh, Vicky is always talking about chat GPT. That's because it's been very helpful and it can also help you. A lot of those things that a lot of people come to the group and ask for, uh, I need um, uh, JD for this, I need this, I need that. There are a lot of things that you won't even need to ask again that you would only now be asking for those you know, ask you know, asking for those strategic uh, uh, questions, coming in with you know strategic questions. How you can be more, uh, how you can be more more efficient in your work and all. And a lot of all those HR admin tax, administrative part of our tax, you will just leave it for your sidekick, which is the chat GPT, to help you with it. Yes, I know that chat GPT, uh, chat GPT is not. A superman is not a superhero, but it, it actually has magical powers that you probably hasn't even think about. It's just like the okay, Siri, do this for me, and oh, that's just your own Siri, that's your assistant that helps you to do whatever it is you want to do. So I know you're probably thinking about ah, is this GPT coming to replace our jobs? No, we all have our jobs at least. Not yet, we are not losing our jobs. And so what ChatGPT does is it makes you more efficient, it makes you work faster, it makes you work smarter. You have an assistant that will never complain. You can ask ChatGPT questions like in different ways. You can say, okay, okay, ChatGPT, please compose a list a JD for so 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 for probably executive assistant position, and then GPT, GPT will do that. And then you can again say, okay, no, I don't want it this way, do it this way. You can keep on at it like that for one hour and you keep asking, and that is an assistant that you have that will never complain that, oh, you're asking me too much question. In fact, GPT is happy to do that. So this is what we are trying to do today to let you know that, okay, you already know about GPT, but how effective, how can you use it more effectively, more efficiently in a way that you can now work smarter, faster as against working hard, like working from morning till night. Like today now, I've done a lot of things, 90% of which it is just a GPT that has helped me with it. So let's move on to the next stage. The next slide, please. Okay, so I say here, some of ChatGPT's capabilities in HR include, you are in page five, I need page four. Okay, but let me just keep talking. Okay, good. So we are going to ChatGPT and its capabilities. What can this, um, so um, full meaning of GPT, this generative pretty. Generative pretend transformer, that is what GPT means. And it is an artificial intelligence that it is that we, you use it for a lot of things, not just HR, but it's just that today we are dwelling more on GPT. And then we'll be going over all the HR value, not everyone, not everything, because we can't cover everything right now, but I'll just be pointing out a lot of the HR value chain that GPT can help us with. I'll be mentioning the recruitment and I, I hiring processes, I'll be mentioning training processes, onboarding and induction, exit processes, employee engagement, and a lot of all those HR value chains and how GPT can help us with this. So I'll be starting with the recruitment. How can GPT help us with recruitment? The first thing is, of course, when you want to recruit, 
you want to first of all create job description. I've seen a lot of, uh, can you please help me with job description for this and that. So I am moving over the HR technology because I'm sure you by, by now we all know that HR technology is very important. People who use HRIS as against Excel and people who has knowledge of using the two, you already know the difference between the two. You can be on Excel like for several hours trying to calculate payroll and do this. Why with HRIS, you just impute it and within a few minutes you're done with preparing your payroll. So HR technology is very vital. We cannot, we, we, we can't dispute that fact. And so I would not be dwelling on that much because we have a time lag. So I'm starting with um, the recruitment and hiring processes. How can GPT help us with our recruitment and hiring process? The first thing, just as I said, is you want to create a job description. And so I've seen a lot of people coming into the group and say, ah, I need a job description for executive assistant. I need job description for operation manager. I need JD for this. I need JD for that. So uh, you can do this with ChatGPT. It is very, very simple. Just go to ChatGPT. And, and one thing before I start telling you how to do this, please know that when you are communicating with ChatGPT, communicate with it as if you're talking to human being. You want to ask a question, just as you want to come to Vicky and ask a question that you want to do this, ask that question the same way. For example, those things that you type in the group and say, I want to do this, how can I do this? You'll be surprised that if you take it to GPT and post it like that, you get an answer. So that is how to ask questions. And then when you ask questions and you'd see an error, it's either you did not ask very well, probably your question is too complex and that is why you didn't get an answer. So you want to probably edit your question. So once you do that and you are still getting error, the next thing you want to do is you want to check your, 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 your internet and see if probably you have issues with internet. Once you do that, sometimes, because I don't know about others, I use the, uh, the the free version. And so it is on chat GPT when you come in, it is, it is on chat GPT that uh, when there is there are issues, probably when there are a lot of crowd on the on the on the on the app, the people that are paying for the app are the ones who get served first. People like us are not paying for the app. So when you ask questions and you see errors, sometimes there are just too much traffic on the on the app so you can just come back or you can just close the window and reopen the window once you do that you will see that you will just get it will just come up that's one thing another thing is as you are asking questions look at the the window you are seeing um, mr Riemi's window everything that is asking you will see the 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 the, the information that you Questions that you've asked even last week, you can go back to it. So you want to ask GPT, create a job description for me. It will do that for you. Just type what you want to do, and it will do that for you to create job description. Now, one thing you need to do is train GPT before you start even using GPT. Try to train GPT on what you do in your organization. For example, I have my organization what I do, the name of my organization, I have it already in GPT. I have prepared, I prepared a um, proposal, a lot of things with GPT. So for example, if I go to my GPT now and I type, please prepare a job description for an operations manager in, at Brown Energy Group. GPT already know Brown Energy Group. It already knows what we do in our organization. And so it will be able to tailor that job description to what we do in our organization and it immediately give it to me. You will see it will immediately tell me that, okay, um, this, 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 it will immediately bring it out. So GPT is trained already, it has the name of my organization, it has everything. So that way, when you are asking GPT for one thing or the other, it already has what you do in your organization in your memory. That's one thing we need to first of all do. 
So when you are asking for job description for this, it already knows that you're asking for job description for, for example, Recruit Aid Limited. And it already knows that Recruit Aid Limited is into recruitment and training. So it will just bring it out to you and tailor it towards the, the job description and what you do in your organization. I'm trying to, Mr. Liam, sorry, I mentioned your name again. I want to share my screen so you see my, my, my GPT and you see how I use it. So while I'm doing that, another thing you need, you can do with GPT is that you can create job adverts. You can create job adverts, adverts with GPT. All you have to do is just tell GPT what you want to do. I want to create job adverts and for example, when I want to create job adverts, I don't, I don't just tell GPT that I want to create job adverts. I also tell GPT where I want to, adver for example, job adverts, the way I will advertise job on LinkedIn will be different from the way I will advertise job on our Instagram page. So I want to tell GPT that I want to advertise this on our LinkedIn page. Please create job adverts for me and it will bring it out. You will see it how it will bring it out. Also, Creating KPI and KRAs, that's key performance indicator and key result uh, uh, areas. You can do this with GPT. It is very simple. I wish I can show you how to, but I'm still trying to share my screen. So you can easily create this with a uh, GPT. Just tell GPT that, okay, create job description for so, 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 so position. It will bring it out for uh, create a key performance indicator for social position, it will bring it out for you. And then if you are not satisfied, tell uh, GPT again, please put so, 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 don't add so, 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 include this and include that. It will bring it out for you. Please, once you can see my screen, my GPT, please you let me know while I continue. So, um, you can also do Boolean search string with GPT search string. That is what we mostly use for. Uh, can you please, can you all see my screen? Okay, so Boolean searching, we use it in LinkedIn. I normally use it most of the time when I want to create a search string. Maybe I, I'm looking for, for example, there was a time I was looking for operations manager in a particular, that has experience in a particular organization. I want to bring them into our organization. So with Boolean searching, you can say operations manager, you use and, you use not, you use all those things to be able to uh, search a particular, for particular role in a particular organization. So when you want to create Boolean structuring and you don't know how to bring them together, you don't know if you should use not or if you use if you use and, just go to GPT, create Boolean structuring for operations manager that has experience in this particular organization. Please do not include HR operations manager or people's operations manager. That is what you want to do, but you don't know how to create this Boolean search string in a way that you can take it to LinkedIn and get your results. So just tell GPT, create Boolean search string for operations manager that has experience, maybe in a particular, in, in, for example, in uh, Chevron, please do not include people operations manager and HR operations manager, just operations manager. You see GPT will bring it out and it will bring out what exactly what you need to post, operations manager in quotes, not HR operations in quotes, not people's operations. You see it, it will bring it in quote like that. And then you have it and you can paste it on LinkedIn and you can get the exact particular people that you're looking for and then you'll be able to reach out to them. Now, another thing, interview banks. You can interview questions, you can create interview question bank with GPT. Just put the particular roles. One by one. Don't forget. 
doing our gonna you want to uh, uh, for this rule you to bring it out and then you'll be able to, to be able to get your interview banks that you even keep and use for free. you want to create assessment use gpt just tell gpt i need assessment form i need an assessment form for this particular rule it will bring it out for you you see the form you can now be able to take it to the to word document or if you want to use Word or you want to use Excel, you can now copy it and take it there and get it. Now, for example, after you use a Boolean search string and then you've been able to get a particular person that you think is a good fit for your organization. Now you want to reach out to the person. Knowing you know that the person does not know you and then you want to reach out to the person that's candidate outreach in a way that it will not sound offensive. You would have to like, ah, I, this person did not know me. You have to apologize for even intruding. Go to GPT. Please reach out. Please create a, 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 a candidate outreach. Reach out to an HR manager for this particular, for an HR manager role that we are currently sourcing for in Recruit Aid Limited. Please make sure that you are polite and apologize for intruding or apologize for. Um, you know, sending, um, you know, you, because you do not know the person. So apologize for sending a message. Apologize, just just type anything that, okay, you want to, I want you to apologize for even coming to your DM in the first place. I want you to be polite and I want you to be straightforward. If, um, assuming I can share, you see the answers that it will bring. As you are listening, you can also do this and let me know the answer you get. You see the answer that you get. It will bring it out, the SSO person, to polite, polite email that you will just copy and then paste it and send this to the person in a more polite manner, like in the, in the simplest way that you never even can imagine. And to give you exactly what you need. In case it did not give you exactly what you need, there is an option for you to keep telling GPT, just like your assistant. Keep telling GPT what you want GPT to do. For example, if I, you can uh, uh, particularize this on your GPT as we are talking now. Go to GPT, tell GPT to type, to give you job description of a particular role. You will see that GPT will not just give you the job description, it will give you this, uh, uh, we are into, it will give you the, uh, like a whole information that you can use as job adverts. That's the first thing GPT will give you. So in that case, what you send GPT for just, just job description, but it's going to give you a lot of other information. So you can just reply again in, in the chat. Please make this maybe longer. You need it longer or you need it shorter. Please make this long, longer or please make this shorter. This time around, don't include any unnecessary information. I need just the job description, no other information. And you will see that it will now bring it out. Our company is into so, so, so. We need HR manager. This HR manager should be able to do this and it will now put number one, number two, number three, and it will list it exactly what you need. So, that's one of the things that it can do. And then you want to convince, uh, just like we talk about candidate outreach. Now you've prepared, GPT has given you the candidate outreach email that you can send to the person. Maybe you were opportune to get the email address from your friend. Now you, most of the time we have this issue, we know what you want to do, but the subject of the mail, like you would, sometimes you spend 30 minutes thinking of what's the better subject of the mail I can use for this thing. And then you, you keep typing subject of the mail. Just go to GPT, I want to do this. What's the better subject of the email I can use? You, you see different subject, subject, suggestions that you can use. Another thing you can do, candidate summary. For example, when you are recruiting, now candidate has reached out to you, you have pool of CVs in, on your system and you are like, okay, I have shortlisted like 10 of them. I want to send it to the managers that are going to review this CV. I want to also send a summary of these CVs 
to this manager so that by the time most of them does not but that most of them do not do not read that cv but when you have a summary of what is in that inside the cv it will be easy for them to be able to know who and who they want to meet. For example, people like us that work directly with the CEO. My, my CEO doesn't even have that time to be looking at CVs one by one. So how I make my job easier and make it easy for him is I create candidate summary. I just summarize what is inside the CV of the person and what the person stands for. So how can you do this with GPT? Just go to, if in case the person um, send the CV to you via PDF. You can convert it to Word. There are a lot of ways to do that. Convert it to Word. In case your PDF can copy out the Word directly, copy out the CV, take it to GPT, paste it there. Now tell GPT, this is a CV of so -so -so person, of a candidate. I need you to summarize this CV, telling me the pros and the cons of recruiting this person as our HR manager in social -so -so organization. Don't forget that organization that you mentioned, GPT already, ha already has it in his memory because he already trained GPT to know what your organization does and the name of your organization. So you don't, don't need to say our organization anymore, just mention the name of the organization, GPT already knows organization. So give me 10 pros and cons of hiring this person as an HR manager in social -so organization, you see it, it will bring it out, it will list it out there. If it gives you an error, you didn't do it very well. If it gives you an error, you did not do it very well. So you need to redo it. You can start your question first before you then paste the CV or paste the CV and then add your question. Give me 10 pros and cons of recruiting this person as our HR manager. You bring, you see it there. And then once you have the pros and cons, you can now know who and who you, you, uh, uh, that you can recruit. So you have already done candidate summary through um, GPT. Now you also have the pros and cons of hiring this person. Then you can send it to your CEO and you, you guys can review together. It makes your work easier. It makes it even more, much more easier. So what else can you do? You want to do salary benchmark. You want to recruit somebody. Maybe that is even the first time you are recruiting for the position, and um, the they have not they didn't give you any budget. They said, "Are you at the HR now? Go and think of how much we can pay this person." Don't forget, please, before you do, do this. Remember, I I forgot to mention this. GPT only has. Mem information or memory of 2021. It doesn't have 2022 and 2023. So if you want to use GPT to create salary benchmark, it will give you answer. Please don't just say create salary benchmark for me. Mention the country that you have. If not, GPT will go and give you answer based on maybe UK or US. So you can say create salary benchmark for executive assistants in Nigeria, you can even mention the particular sector that you have, maybe oil and gas sector or training and recruitment to even make the answer more um, um, straight to the point. So you will see there to bring the answers, to bring the, uh, the, the benchmark for you from so, 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 so. So when you now have the answer, remember that this GPT that you are talking to has 2021, like, downward it doesn't have 2022 and it doesn't have 2023 so and you know that this is uh, is now kind of quite costlier than 2021 so you can now add to it probably gpt tells you that this person uh, um, should, should be earning between 400 to 800 k in 2021 you can then tell that okay things are has gone up a little bit I can now add maybe 200k or 100k to it. Probably I can now make it like 500 to 900k. Do you understand? So it will just give you the rough knowledge. So don't use the exact figure it gives you because you it is working with 2021. So that is one thing. Then it breaks down a job description for complexity for you. Maybe you are recruiting for a role for the first time. Maybe you are even coming to tech recruitment for the first time and they said you should recruit for a software developer. You don't even know what a software developer is supposed to be doing. So 
how do you do this? You have a job description that they have given to you that you want to use to recruit this person. Copy it out. Tell GPT, break this job description down for me like I know nothing. You will see, sure, I can do this as an a, a, a high bot. I can, you will see it will break down the complexity of that job description for you. What does this role even entails? What is this person supposed to be doing? You want to, okay, thank you. Please give me likely questions, interview questions I can ask this person. It will also bring it down for you. Please bring out, okay, job adverts for this. It will break anything down for you complexity of the job, it will tell you what to do and what the job entails. So what else? Candidate engagement. You want to engage the candidates, you want to keep engaging the candidate while recruiting, just GPT-8. You want to do employee value proposition, okay, what's the employee value proposition? That's the value you, you, you are offering, you know, the value the employee gets from working with your organization. It is very easy. Because GPT already knows your organization. It already knows the name of your organization. It already knows what you do. It probably already even has your vision and mission in its memory that you have impute, that you impute. Maybe you are even starting, uh, you are even the one that created the vision and mission for the organization. And it was through GPT that you did it. It's already in its memory. So it is very easy for GPT to just create employee value proposition for you. Just bring it out for you and you can use it or you keep it in your archive. What else can you do? You draft mails, you, you know, you want to create radio jingle or you want to create jingle for different, different social media for a particular room, just GPT it. And then you get your answer. There are a whole other lot of things that you can do with GPT, but I quickly want us to move to onboarding and training. So onboarding and training using GPT. Now, we want to onboard. The first thing is you need documents to onboard. You need onboarding and training materials. A lot of things that you come to the group that I need onboarding for this, go to GPT. I want to onboard so, 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 so part particular position. I want to onboard or train this, this, this position. Please create onboarding materials or training materials. You are doing, if you are doing onboarding, please create onboarding materials for this particular position. You get it. Or create training materials for this particular position. Just mention it. Mention you get it. Then what else can you do? You are probably in the organization for the first time. You are starting uh, the human resource department for the first time, and it is you that uh, is responsible for creating the comfort You need to unmute. You you need to unmute. Victoria, if you can hear me, please unmute. You are currently muted. Victoria, you need to please unmute. Hello, Victoria.
Did you see my screen before? I was sharing my screen. We can see your screen now. We can see your screen now. Okay, good. So I'm going back to GPT. Okay, just as I was saying, I can't, my system is saying that it's not responding. So let me just continue. Okay, so I have talked about creating policy with it. You go to GPT, create social policy, and then you get it. Then the next thing, you want to edit the existing policy that you have in your organization. Please don't forget, GPT does not currently accept files. So you cannot make it easier. It will have been easier if you can just take the file, you know, um, file on GPT. And then, so you have to copy whatever information that you want to get from GPT. You have to copy the information, put it in the chat box, and then tell GPT what you want GPT to do with that particular um with that particular message that you just posted and then you get it so you want to edit your existing policy take the policy to gpt ask gpt to edit this existing policy ask gpt to probably check if this your policy meets the uh, uh, nigerian labor law and also international standard put it there and then you get your answer it will analyze the part of your policy that are not meeting the international standard and the Nigerian labor law. It will, it will bring it out for you to, to, to show, to itemize it one by one. In fact, even if it might, it might even give you the suggestion of how to coin that policy in a way that it's now meets the international standard and Nigerian labor law. If it doesn't, after it has given you the response, go back to uh, uh, explain uh, in the chat board, the next chat box, put it there. Please give me options or solutions of how I can coin the parts that you brought out that does not meet the international standard and Nigerian labor law. It to bring it out to you how you can do this, how you can achieve this. So what else can you do? Onboarding surveys. You are done with onboarding. Then you want to check with the people that you just onboarded. You want to ask them if they are okay with the onboarding process. If there is a part of your onboarding process that you need to improve on. You don't know how to do this. You have not done it before. You don't even have a form for it. Go to GPT. I have just onboarded so, 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 uh, 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 um, positions. I want to know if I want an onboarding survey form to be able to ask them if the onboarding process met their, the, you know, what, what they, they, they envisaged when they were joining our organization. To immediately bring it out for you to list out, to give you the onboarding survey that you can use. And then take it, the onboarding survey questions, take it to your MS Word, put it there, and then send it out. Once you have sent it out, you get your answers. You want to analyze it with GPT, to know what they meant or to know what to do. Come back to GPT, put your answers there. Tell GPT, this, put, this is what I want you to do. Analyze this survey response. You know, let me know what I need to do. The next thing, what I need to do, what I need to change, what I need to improve on, you get your answer. So a lot of things we can do. Then what else? Training. You want to train a new employee or even old employee. You don't even have forms. You don't know how to go about it. Maybe the role is even, for example, how can you train? You are the HR, they say you should go and train somebody. Maybe the role, you are not even heard about it before. You don't even know how to go about it. Maybe the person does not even have line manager that can put you through. And you don't even have document for it. Go to GPT. Create training materials 
for software developer. Tell GPT the particular training so that it will not go and be training, giving you what you don't need. The particular training that you want it to create a, um, a, a training materials for, maybe just normal, general um, company policies and all. Put the particular training there, create training materials for this. It will give you the training materials. It will tell you what you need to do, the materials that you need, and then all. What else can you do? You want to create, uh, you want to get feedback from training. You want to track employee performance. You want to know how well they have done with um, the training that you have just. Yes, Chat GPT has muted you. You need to unmute. You need to unmute. Chat GPT, please unmute Victoria Abimbola. Yes, thank you, Chat GPT, for unmuting our speaker. Sorry, it means I cannot share my screen because each time I try to share my screen so that I can show you my GPT and how I'm doing it, it does meet. Victoria, there is, there is village GPT. There is village GPT. <laughs> so after this training, if you still need to practicalize it with me, feel free to come to my DM. We will do it together. So you I think I want to, I really want to show you. But you know I can't. Do, I don't know why. Victoria, when next you are in when your office you and you have a good laptop, let me know. We'll do a separate recording that we will upload. That is only okay. practical. I think that, that would that would even you be better. Be one one. It's not sustainable. <laughs> All right. I think that would let even be better because I already have. Laptop. Yes. I already have a lot of things on my GPT that I've already asked that I would have just loved to show you the responses I got, but I don't know why he's meeting me once I go there. So let's continue. What else can you do with GPT when it comes to training and onboarding? You can provide, you can track employee performance with quizzes and assessments. You can even offer training support. You can provide tools and resources to help employees overcome learning barriers. Sorry, um, can I, can you please just share the screen back since I can't use GPT. So I'm moving to what you can do when it comes to performance management. How can GPT help you with performance management? The first thing is you probably need, um, probably you need the um, appraisal document. You need to, you probably need recommendations first on how to, maybe you need a, a, a recommendations on how to improve um, employee performance, you know, performance data, you already have performance data. I'm on page 15, you already have performance data and then you want GPT to help you read this data and tell you how you can better, you know, help your organization, your staff perform better. So it offers you recommendations based on the performance data that you have it will bring it out for you that this, based on this performance data that you have, this and these are recommendations on how to improve your, your employee's performance. Now, probably you don't even have appraisal documents of what to even, or to even start your performance management process or your appraisal. To do your appraisal, you don't even have the appraisal form, appraisal document. You know that GPT can actually give you appraisal forms to use. It will not bring it out as form that has table, but it will bring out the information that you can take to your MS Word and then create tables with it. I know this because I've practicalized this. Please, um, hello, GPT. I actually talk to GPT as if I'm talking to, to somebody, to a human being. When I enter my GPT, the first time I will say hello, GPT, to it will answer me. In fact, my GPT knows that I'm a big killer. 
<laughs> so, I, so I, I remember the first time I introduced myself. And then whenever I, once I'm done, I say thank you. It will reply me. So I talk to GPT as if I'm actually talking to a human being. So you want to say, okay, um, you don't have performance appraisal form. Please create it. It will create it for you. Now it has what you do. So it knows what you do, it knows the organization. It will be, it's very easy to just tailor it to what you do in your organization. You want um, 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 GPT to provide employee engagement or whatever. I remember there was a time somebody asked what um, are the TGIF things I can do in the organization. And then I brought out a list of what you can do. I got that answer from GPT. All I did was that question that you posted on the, the, the page. I just took it directly as, as you, you brought it. I took it to GPT, I posted it there. And then I got a lot of different things that you can do for TGIF. Sometimes when you are bivet, sometimes you see error with GPT. So you might want to write the full meaning. I remember there was a time I was asking about KPI and KRA. I kept getting error until I put the full key performance indicator, key results areas, then I got my answers. So when you abbreviate and you see that you are getting error, put the full, the full, the full meaning of what you are abbreviating, you get your answer. So employee engagements, how to get them satisfied with their work, get, go to GPT, put it there. And then while you are ask, asking the, this kind of questions, don't forget to tell GPT that it should give you suggestion based on your location where you are, you are in Nigeria. For example, if you have issues in your organization and then maybe your employees are going through one thing or the other, maybe you even have issues that they have asked you to solve this issue as an HR, then you go to GPT, you want to ask, make sure that you put it there that, okay, based on Nigerian labor law, can you analyze so so? What is the part of Nigerian labor law that fits so so thing? Or you want to do something when it comes to maybe employee engagement? Tell GPT that Nigeria put it there. So always try and put your location and make sure that you just try to push your location in those particular questions, especially when it boils down to engagement and a lot of things that um, you can localize. That way you'll be able to get more results than just putting it there. Because when you just put it there like that and you don't put your location, not everything, don't forget, particular question that boils down to location or to Nigerian setting or probably UK setting or wherever it is you have, put your location there. That way you'll be able to get good results than just generalizing it. Then you want to improve employees' performance. You want to develop plans that can help you to improve their performance. You need tools and resources to be able to identify what are the areas of improvement. Just go to GPT, type it there. Can you please suggest tools and resources I need to be able to identify the areas of improvement or development for my organization, mention the organization. If you have trained the organization, the GPT on what you do and your name, it already, it, it already knows it to bring it out. You want to guide your managers, your line managers, you want to guide them, you want to effectively coach develop their employees. So there was like was a time someone was talking about a particular line manager that is very active, that is up and doing, but doesn't know how to interact with the subordinates go to GPT, this particular line manager, I have issues with it, with the person, and this is a particular issues I have with this line manager. Can you suggest to me how I can talk to this person? I remember the person was even afraid of how to even address the line manager because the person is, you know, is active and is doing well in other parts, but the person is not doing well when it comes to um, interacting with the subordinates, and that is what you want to do. So go there, put it there. You see a lot of suggestions on how to better it. You want to even get faster results, put it there that you are in Nigeria. 
can you analyze it based on the Nigerian setting? You get even more results, definite results, free, concise results. So high performing employees, how can you, you know, recognize them? How can you engage them? How can you make them feel among feel like, okay, we, we value you? Go to GPT. Ask GPT, how can I, you know, provide employee recognition and, and rewards for my staff? You will see different suggestions of what you can do. You want to provide a, a feedback to support employees, to keep them, you know, to help them to reach their full potential. Go to GPT. I remember um, the training timetable that I created for my um, HR department for this year, I use GPT for it. Now, please, I quickly need to let you know this. When you are going to GPT, don't say because Vicky kept saying go to GPT, then you, left all, you leave all your work for GPT. You are now doing copy and paste. GPT just give it to you, you just download it, no. This kind of people are the people that GPT is going to take their job. People who just go to GPT, copy, get information, paste it. They are the type that GPT might likely take their job in future. We don't want to do copy and paste with GPT. We are going to go to limitations. But let me just quickly mention it so that you don't say, ah, Vicky said we should go to GPT, no go to GPT, but you, the, the human part of human resource, GPT does not have that. In, also the information it's going to give you is also limited. So you need to analyze the information very well. You need to see through. You might need to add something. For example, that JD that you just created, there is something that GPT will likely miss. There is something that you might likely have to hide. There is something that you might likely have to remove. Please don't copy and paste with GPT. Don't use GPT verbatim. So now we are here. So what are the next thing you can do when it comes to, um, please can I get um, page 16? So what are the likely things that you can do when it comes to, um, Employee engagement and retention, thank you, page 17. So you want to conduct surveys, right? You want to gather feedback on job satisfaction, on work-life balance and overall. Maybe you just saw that people are leaving, people are leaving, you know, you have uh, uh, the attrition rate is like, it's crazy. You, you don't know what, what is going on, what is happening. You want to create survey, you want to conduct survey on what you need to do. Go to GPT, tell GPT the problem you have. Don't just say create, don't just tell GPT, create a survey or forms or likely questions that I can use for survey, for job satisfaction, work-life balance and overall company culture. Tell GPT the problem you have. That way to be able to coin whatever result is giving you towards the problem that you have. But if you just put it the way it is listed here, you will not get a, a very good answer. So the next thing, maybe you want to uh, uh, analyze employee sentiments to identify areas for improvement in the workplace and address them proactively. Maybe your employee are saying that um, um, somebody is being, is being given an edge over others, whatever issues that you have. You have issues with your employee. They probably have sentiments about a particular thing. Go to GPT, GPT it. Career development record recommendations for different departments, different uh, uh, roles. Go there, GPT it. I need your career development recommendations for social so role. You will get it. You want to identify high performing employees and you want to recognize them get your data, performance data, your results from your <clears throat> appraisal form, copy it, paste it in GPT. GPT will analyze that result, that appraisal result, and it will tell you, the, it will give you recommendation. 
this person has performed very well. What are the things that I can do to recognize this person? What are more opportunities for growth I can provide to this person to bring it out? Don't forget when he brings it out, analyze it, do addition and subtraction. Don't just copy it and paste it. You need resources and tools to manage employee stress and improve work-life balance. Go to GPT. It will bring out the results of a lot of things that you can do to manage stress in the workplace. Even you yourself, how to even manage the stress that you have by yourself, it will bring it out. Training and development opportunities for particular roles that you might not even know, you might not even have it because you, you it's not possible for you to know, to have training and development opportunities in your head for all the roles in your organization, especially people that manage a lot of, you know, large number of employees. That is why you have GPT. So, some really GPT is just there to give you the knowledge, like tell you the, like the knowledge you don't have about a particular thing. That way you would not be able to focus on, you know, more strategic, strategic um, part of your role, more the, the strategic, most strategic part of your role, more strategic duties. So that is what it does. Let's go to page 18. So you'll be able to, with GPT, you're focusing on the strategic part of your role. You're leaving GPT to work on others that are not, you know, that are others that you might not have the information, you might not have the knowledge, or might take too, a, a, a lot of time for you to achieve this. So I'm going to page 18 now. So page 18, compensation and benefit administration. Yes, you can use GPT for compensation and benefit administration. It cannot help you when it comes to creating payroll or creating pay sleep, but there is still ways that it can help you. Number one, let's go to page 19 now. It provides guidance on how you can even design competitive compensation and benefit plans. You want to design you know, a compensation and benefit plans, who get this, when do we give this, when do we provide this, go to GPT. You don't have compensation and benefit plan in your organization. Create competition and benefit plan for Recruit Aid Limited. It will bring it out because it already knows what Recruit Aid does and who Recruit Aid is. It will bring out competition and benefit plan that you can now work with. You want to answer employees' question based on competition and benefit package. There are some questions that employee will come and ask you and you, in fact, it will take you off balance sometimes if you are not, very careful. You want to be able to, ah, let me analyze this very much so that I will not go and give answers that they would hold against me in future. They want to ask you about their healthcare, healthcare, maybe your HMO you provide um, single plan as against family plan and they are asking you questions and probably you are even new in the organization, you don't even know how to do and a lot of things. Just go to GPT and ask GPT how you can best coin your answer in a way that by the time you are giving the answer, additional the answer to the employee, the person knows that ah, this person knows what he or she is doing. This person is sound. So chat GPT will be doing the work for you and you'll be actually be taking the glory. So you want to assist the HR department in administering compassion and benefit plan. The one the plans that you have created with GPT, you want to still know how to administer it, administer it and know process employees' requests, frequently asked questions, use GPT. You want to provide insight to the structure, packages and all. You want to even know, okay, maybe you don't even know, just as I said before, you don't even know how much you should be offering this person, how much you should be offering this person when you are, you are even recruiting. It's to stay on that part of Compassion and benefit, which GPT help you with. Provide salary structure. It is under compassion and benefit that I've mentioned before. Now you need to know this thing that we are even doing. The compassion, our compassion and benefit plan, we did not, it was not from GPT, right? You have it already. You have your compassion and benefit plan. 
Now you're having doubts. Maybe your employees are asking questions, they are raising alarm, and you don't know if it actually matches with you know Nigerian labor law or even international standards. Just go to GPT. This is my compensation and benefit plan, that my existing compensation and benefit plan. Can you let me know if it's if it is at par with the international standard and the Nigerian labor law? It will bring it out. If you want to try it now, you can go to GPT and ask GPT for a particular column of the Nigerian labor law, what it says, probably ask GPT. You can type it there, ask GPT what the Nigerian labor law says about social, social compensation and benefits. You see that GPT actually knows the Nigerian labor law and not just you. So for example, you are going for, you know, you, you, you are an HR and it is, expected that you have the knowledge of a lot of, of the Nigerian labor law. But just as my boss normally tell me something that the brain is not computer, is not for storing information. It is for processing information. So you might not likely remember everything. That is why you have GPT. You have probably probably forgot what the Nigerian labor law says about a particular compensation and benefit. And this Gen Z person in front of you raising an alarm and want to tear you down. Go to GPT, type it there immediately. And you get your answer. Let's go to the next page. Hello. We can't hear you, Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Chat GPT, we can't hear Victoria. Over. Okay, I'm here now. We can't hear Victoria. Ah, Victor, we asked GPT earlier where Victoria is. So he said he doesn't have okay for her voice. Okay. I understand. Maybe she is owing GPT. Now I can't see her voice. We are still trying to see if we can get her back. So while we are waiting for her, um, just to say and put it out there that. Um, for those of us who are into recruitment, we need to be extra careful. We, we, we need to be extra careful because for those of us that typically give candidate case studies to do, what some of them do now is they use chat GPT to do the case study. They say Konima and die, Konima and Beria. Now, what you don't know is that the sharp recruiter we also will probably have run the assessment which at GPT, have the feedback or options from chat GPT. So when you as a candidate go and do a case study with chat GPT, it will just be too clear and obvious that you did copy and paste. It will, you know, it may malign your integrity and show that you are not trustworthy. Okay. So as a recruiter too, when you give people case study, you may want to change your approach. My organization today, when we give case studies, 
now, we will let you come either online or physically and we'll give you the question and you're answering it instantaneously. Not that we'll give you one day ahead because we now know that in addition to you reaching out to your friends and professional colleagues, you can reach out to chat GPT. So as it has advantages, it has disadvantages, but also as HR, we also need to learn that some of our professional colleagues today who are asking us questions at work as relating to the services we render in HR, before they will ask you, they will probably have asked chat GPT. So they already have like a framework or possible answers. God help you if you are, your own response is now even more shallow than what is available in public domain, especially when you claim to be the expert, when you claim to be the professionals. Okay, my, my friend, my colleague, my brother here, Victor Adebayo, says, he put it in the chat box, said that there are other AI tools that also help to identify the source of any document. Okay, so it is important. Don't just go and do copy and paste and submit it in its entirety like you own it. There are certain organizations or institutions who can check it out using other AI tools and it will be obvious, glaring, whether it is your original thought or something. So we're not saying don't use it, but use it with, uh, with, with sense, okay? Don't be like those kind of people um, who doing the exam, copied somebody else's work and copied their metric number. In other words, they will be caught, all right? Yeah, yeah, quite a number of us are underutilizing GPT. There are a lot of things we can do with it, we will do with it. And it's not only chat GPT, just to also let you know that there are other AIs. Chat GPT is just one type of artificial intelligence that is available for free at some levels today. There are also other types of AIs, artificial intelligence, okay? so that we also get to, to know that, and it can help inquire a number, a number of ways. Now, please, um, one of our friends, this person is also Victor Adebayo's friend. She's my friend, so Tokumbo. So, said something two days ago in a group we both belong to, a non-HR group, but a professional group too. She said something that really got me thinking, that the same way the calculator prevented some people from knowing mathematics. Because when you say three times four, what do they do? They will carry their phone or their calculator to check it. Something that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the multiplication table effortlessly people could relate. Now, almost two times two, some people have to carry a phone or a calculator to check it out. Don't let chat GPT or any artificial intelligence tool compromise your own intelligence because there will always be situations where maybe you're in a board meeting, you are with your CEO or a, a critical stakeholder, and they will ask you a question that you need to be able to respond to on the spot. You may not be able to quickly type on your phone or quickly check it out on your laptop. If you have consistently over time subjected yourself to just overtly relying on AI, your Ashiri with you, your secret will come out. Okay? Please, again, um, let me say this. I hope our facilitator can come back because I'm just filling in for her right now. I hope she can come back. If she's back, please speak. Um, yet today, please reach out to her to find out that she, she's fine or I'll reach out to our true chat GPT. So as, as, as I was saying, the, the beauty of chat GPT is the, the quality of responses you get is actually de defined by the quality of questions you ask it. Now in AI language, they call it prompt. Prompt, how you phrase your questions, for example, determine the type, and quality of response in this. Let me mention some other things you can use chat GPT to do. 
So for example, International Women's Day, you can say chat GPT, help it draft an International Women's Day appreciation or, or memo or mail to all female staff or to all staff. It will give you something. On the other hand, you could have written something by yourself. Now put it in chat GPT and tell it to enhance it for you, review it for you, or tell chat GPT to help you put it in a formal tone, or tell chat GPT to put it in a friendly tone, okay, or in a poetic tone, all right? Again, let's assume you've written something, you can put it in chat GPT and ask chat GPT to help you eliminate redundant words or statements and help you make the article or the write-up or the memo more concise and, and more direct, okay? That, that's, that's another way to, to look at it. Your, your colleague is doing a bad day. You can say, Chad GPT, help me come up with a bad day greeting for a female colleague that is helpful. And in seconds, okay, it, 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 does, it does it for you. So, excuse me. You, you must use chat GPT to enhance, improve your, your, your communication to, to your employees, your colleague, your, your, your staff. It, it's in the real sense of it, an, an assistant. So assuming you want to come up with a, a mentorship program at work, you can say chat GPT, what should be the constituent of a mentorship program? It will give you list out eight, nine, ten things for you quickly, and then you quickly have a framework to begin the work. You can say, how do I review or evaluate a mentorship program? It will come up with options for you. Okay. So, in other words, we are just saying, please embrace this tool, just like any other technology. Embrace technology. It also now, lastly, and I like the fact that the facilitator was saying is that if you are using it dogmatically, it will replace you because there will be no need for you. So if you are operating on an arithmetic progression before, because of chat GPT, you should not be operating on a geometric progression. In other words, your productivity should be faster now. If it will have taken you 20 minutes to write a memo before, now in five minutes, you are true. If you are getting 20 things done in the day before, now you are getting 50 days. Please don't turn it to a tool that you now spend more time on WhatsApp chatting vainly or watching a movie, knowing that you have tools to help you do your work. It will catch up with you somehow and you won't like it because other people who are using the same tools and um, techniques and facilities and they'll be getting you'll be what, they'll, they'll be getting, getting uh, aid, all right? So if I have any quick questions, I may be able to take it on behalf of the facilitator, okay? If you have any questions, I'll be able to take it on behalf of the facilitator. But just in case there's uh, anybody here um, who has not used chat GPT before, let me just, um, Show us quickly, just a minute. So let me log on and then just show us and we just take um, one or two things. Okay. I, I'm, I'm trying to share my screen here. So this is my screen. All right, I'm positive you can see and you can see I have so many things opened up, but you can see this is the, the theme, chat.openai.com, auto login, you can see. So because I've already registered before, if you are not registered, you will need to register, okay? So I will log in, but if you have not used it before now, you've not registered before now, what you need to do is to sign up. So because many people, thousands of people, millions of people worldwide are trying to sign up, you may have to be patient, it may take a day or two or three 
for you to complete the registration or for you to log in. You may be told that depending on when you register, the pressure, you may be told that you are on a wait list. Okay, and you may be lucky. You may just get in almost instantaneously. So I will just log in, okay, because I've already, I'm already using it. All right. So you, you, I just log in because I've, I've, I've registered with this before now. You can see me logging in. Okay. And then this is the prompt it comes up with. All right. It shows, it sent a message. So because this is an HR um, training, okay. So can somebody put a question you want us to ask in the chat box? An HR question, please. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Um, Tochi Ikefu says, I registered as the meeting was going on and I'm already in. Fantastic. That's the kind of learners um, we, we know. Okay. Do, you, do we also know that chat GPT has a WhatsApp number? I've been using it and it really helps. Fantastic. Okay, you can also drop the, the number on the group. All right. So anybody have a question you want us, an HR question quickly? Okay, let me see. Oh, this is my friend and colleague, Jimmy Mokiko. So I'm going to type the question. He asks, I won't, I won't mention it. I'll just type it. How do I fire my line manager? You can see, I've entered the prompt. Now, look, you can see the feedback is coming in fast and furious. Fantastic. You can see, so look at that. It has gotten to 0.3, it's now on 0.4. All right, you can see it's now on 0.5. Now on point six, you can see that as it's coming up with information, it is um, showing us. So let's quickly go through. You will now see that it automatically created like a an header or sub heading, fire line manager. He used that as the keyword. Now let's look at the key things he put here. There is even an introduction. Firing your line manager can be a serious decision with what? potential consequence. It is important to consider the reasons for wanting to take this step and to exhaust all other options before proceeding. AI even has uh, emotions. In other words, it's trying to tell you that, think carefully and thoroughly. It now goes ahead to say, assuming that you have already tried addressing the issues with your line manager through open communication and feedback, and the situation is untenable, there are some general steps you can follow. Look at that general steps, because there may be specific steps in your organization or in your country based on prevailing labor laws. So step one, review your company policy. I won't read the rest. Okay. Step two, gather evidence. Okay. Step three, it is assuming here now that the person that wants to fire is not an HR person. It says consult with HR. Okay. Step four, Schedule a meeting with your manager supervisor. In other words, the person your manager is reporting to. Are you with me? Step five, be professional. Step, five, be professional. Step six, follow up Step after six, the meeting. Follow up. We now conclude by saying, somebody needs to mute their mind. Somebody Remember that firing a manager is a serious step. A manager and should is only be taken after careful. Awesome. All right. Okay. All right. So I think. Okay. So I we can call it a wrap. We can call it a wrap. The echo I'm getting will be a good signal. Call it a night. Call it a night. Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. Victoria. Victoria. Do you want to come and close the session? Yes, sir. So let me stop. Okay, sharing. I was already done before I was. I was already done before I left, so I don't know if anybody asked, I, I, I have a question. Any question for Victoria, please raise up your hand so that we allow you ask her quickly. We'll take one or two questions. The rest, go and ask chat GPT. 
All right, it's 9 37, and there is also work tomorrow. And there is also work the tomorrow. All right, I can Deborah see. Deborah, I want to ask a question. I can see Deborah, please ask the question, Deborah. please. Yes, thank you very much, um, yes, Chad GPT Effect Brand, Chad Biki. My question is Can Chad GPT help can me create um, flights, for example? For example. And um, another question and, um, is I noticed that Chad GPT. Chat would GPC give different answers give different to answers. the same so, question when you ask it again and again. So is that um, a benefit for me or um, a limitation for, for um, this one? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you for your question. I'll start from the first one. Can GPT create slides? Yes but you would have to create the slide by yourself. Just as I said before, when I was wrapping up, I said I created a proposal and website documents for an organization that contracted me and I used GPT and some other personal information. So, and it was a slide. This, um, this meeting that the slide that was shared, part of 80% of the information, the slide was done with um, GPT and Canva. The information was from GPT and personal information on my head. Canva did the designing. I am the one that will be typing it, getting the information from GPT taking it to the slide if you want to use PowerPoint or you want to use Canva for your slide, whichever one you want to use. So you ask the question, for example, what is your question? Maybe you want to say, you want to create a, a, um, a, a training, you know, a slide on a particular training. Ask GPT, this is what I want to do. Break down, give me a breakdown of topics, subtopics under this training. It will bring out the subtopics for you. Then each of that topic, now start picking it one by one. Tell GPT to analyze this one. It will analyze this and then you put, you, you go and you edit it and put it. When you are done with the first subtopic, go back there, copy the next one, put it there. And then that's how you do it. And you finish the whole presentation with the information that you get from GPT. Now you ask, you said that, um, when you ask GPT a question, you get different answer. It is not a limitation. If GPT is giving you the same answer, it means it is giving me the same answer. It means it is giving another person the same answer. It means that we shouldn't even use it as HR because whatever it is you get is what I get. So when you ask GPT a question, the answer you get is tailored towards how you ask GPT at that particular time. I don't know, maybe I've been able to answer your question. Yes, Thank you, you did. Thank you. Yes. Let's take uh, the final Let's question take, for tonight. Uh, Isaac, Isaac Kunle. Isaac Kunle. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, so my question is, um, Victoria, you said you um, configured your chat GPT settings to your organization. How can I do that? Okay, how do you train chat GPT? That's the question, Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Victoria, are you still with us? Hello, Victoria, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with you. I didn't get his question. How can you train chat GPT? How you said you that chat? you trained chat you GPT that. with information with respect to your organization so that it's responses yes. 
is to a large extent customize and put into context what your organization does or is doing. So, Kule's question is, okay. how do you train ChatGPT? And that's the final question for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so how do you train GPT? Just as I said, the first thing I did when I started using GPT was I introduced myself. So GPT now knows my name. The moment I introduced myself and gave GPT my name, it knows my name. So if I'm asking question now, it knows, and I say, provide so, -so, -so for Victoria, it knows who, who Victoria is. If I have not introduced myself and GPT does not know Victoria. You will see, as an ear, I do not, I, I do not know who Victoria is. You will see it there. So the next thing I did was, okay, the, my company's name is Broad Energy Group. We are into that was. I remember that time I wanted to create a JD for a particular role that I've never, I haven't recruited before. So I said, my company's name is Broad Energy Group. We are into oil and gas servicing. We do this, we provide social survey, biometric survey, geotechnical survey, um, geophysical survey, seismic survey. I listed what we did, what we are doing, what how we provide our, 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 our services. I even added our mission and vision. Do you understand? And so I now asked that I want you, based on this, I want you to create or what you would do. I want you to create job description for Sosoro that will fit our vision and vision, what we do and the kind of service we provide. So GPT gave me that. I have, the moment I have been put that information in GPT, in GPT doesn't forget. So tomorrow, if I'm going to GPT and say, create Sosoro for Bone Energy Group, I have two different companies now that GPT now knows. The moment I mention this company, it knows, you even see it there. I can probably share my screenshot in the group and you see, create social so for recruited. It will not use information of recruited for bone energy group, no. It will give me what you will see there. Recruited. In, in fact, JD, it will, before you even give me the JD, it will immediately say, um, recruit Ed Limited is in so, 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 so they do this, they do this, they do this, and then before it will not give me the JD. So because I input the information. Also, that when I wanted to work with the other company that said contracted me, the proposal, I got it from recruited. I input the information, what that company was is, is into. So it is trained. And also another way is, the information that the, the, your, your charts about that company, what they do, you have it in the memory. So when you go back there to GPT and go and pick that particular conversation and you start, you don't need to tell GPT who that company is anymore. Even if it is a new chat box, you still don't need to tell GPT about that company because it's already in the memory. But you want to even make it more concise. You did not trust that GPT knows the company because it is not the same chat. Go to the same chat where you have introduced the company. Go and ask the question there. You get your answer without having to introduce the company again. So informations how to, some really how to train GPT. Provide information of what you do. Provide information of what you do. It never forgets. It's not like we human being that when you tell, for example, if you tell me something today now, you have to probably remind me tomorrow. No, it's not GPT. Once you tell GPT something, you don't need to remind GPT tomorrow. It's already in the memory. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for that exclusive, highly informative session tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do at HR Mentorship, bringing knowledge to your doorstep. We believe all of us, if we become better, it will be more glorious for all of us. All right? Please enjoy the rest of the night. Good night. See you on Saturday at our next session. All right? We'll drop information how to join HR Mentorship for those who need it. The YouTube recording, if uh, Vicky permits, to consult with uh, chat GPT. All right, I'll drop the link. Hmm.
<laughs> All right. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Vicky, there's a fellowship after fellowship. Uh, Vicky, there's a fellowship.